Hey, hi everybody. Welcome to the channel again. We're going to take a, kind of a, a continued approach to the last video I did on dump HFDL uh, since I went down the rabbit hole and was trying to figure out how to get HF aircraft related data into Grafana. Uh, couldn't help but also look at dump VDL2, which is an open source decoder for VDL2 VHF data link mode 2 basically. Uh, it's one of the main digital communication systems used from aircraft uh, to talk to ground stations. Operates in about 136 to 137 megahertz in the VHF band. Uh, it does capture uh, things such as ACARS messages, uh, aircraft communications addressing and reporting system messages, uh, which are just short digital messages between aircraft and ground station. Um, that could have things like uh, flight plans, position reports, weather requests. Uh, sometimes you'll see multi-block ACARS messages, some network layer packets, um, and some other things. So just as a recap, the HFDL that we did in the last video was long range H, uh, HF data over um, HF links basically and uh, VDL2 is the short to medium range VHF so uh, really if you kind of follow along the so what of this video and as to why I you know started getting data into, into Grafana was basically to visualize real-time positions from decoded messages instead of just uh, log or you know instead of just text basically logs and then kind of correlate frequency flight and station data um, I don't know, maybe you could spot coverage gaps or you could cross analyze your uh, HF DL data and VDL2 da uh, data. Uh, anyways, I just thought it was a fun angle on uh, using Grafana to go beyond just raw logs. And then, you know, once the matrix are in uh, Graphite or Loki, uh, you can start slicing and sorting by airline, message type, frequency, and uh, really just create a dashboard as you see fit. So, um, anyways, dump VDL2 that I have up on the screen here, you can see uh, its features and you could, you know, compile it if you'd like, but I am doing this on Dragon OS Noble, which has everything essentially uh, that's needed built in. And what I did was, is I put some of the latest code up here on just a project that I made public added to it in despite the name because I started it out with just dump uh, HFDL maybe I'll change that eventually but it actually does uh, dump VDL too. you can see the overview we're gonna natively run these applications with two different software defined radios in this case I have an RTL SDR blog version 4 that I'm gonna dedicate to the dump VDL 2 and I have the uh, AirSpy uh, discovery let me not mess it up let me look at it AirSpy uh, Discovery HF Plus uh, that is over to a U loop antenna, and then there's just a VHF antenna on the um, RTL SDR dongle. That data, the stats D and the JSON info that I explained in the last video, comes through to Graphite and Promtail, and then that gets into Loki and Grafana. Let me think what else. If you hadn't already, some requirements uh, for this particular project uh, Docker. Um, just it just ended up being a little bit easier in this case and so you would get cloned down this project which I have done uh, on my desktop here and I've, I've did a git pull so I'm up to date something else uh, that I should point out I've not pushed it into the main yet is there's a dev branch where I added persistence on the docker um, I think I actually get status it, yeah I think I'm actually on the dev yeah I'm on the dev branch right at the moment so I do have persistence you could do a get checkout main or get checkout dev but I've cloned this down and then I'm gonna run these two commands in separate windows so dump HFDL or actually dump VDL2 in this window I've, I've kept it simple I said hey just use my one and only RTL SDR dongle um, use this uh, type of output I did rotate uh, to daily and um, yeah I put some frequencies in that uh, work fairly well for me for this demonstration you can see the v4 is recognized and being used in the other window 
we'll do the uh, same thing like in the last video dump HFDL and that's the air spy uh, changed the, the rotation on the logs to daily as well kept the same frequencies so those two applications are running at the moment I'll just move them over here a little bit and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the stack here so docker compose up uh, you could do a dash D which would push it uh, you know into the background but I'm just gonna run it just docker compose up I have already done, taken the steps uh, like I showed in the last video and that are on the github project page for installing docker and and um, putting myself in the docker group so really it should just be a docker up at this point once uh, that comes up we could do localhost 3000 you're gonna have to log in with admin admin and immediately uh, you want to check your data sources and you would have added new data sources just like I showed before so you'd pick graphite you'd put the uh, HTTP graphite 80 that's for uh, that particular data source and then Loki you'd add that 3100 uh, I'll put a link to the last video but I showed how to set that up and then the dashboards you're gonna see I've got a new dashboard here that I imported which is part of the uh, project file so dashboard.json we could just do it again if we want so go straight import we can you can do it numerous different ways you can drag it over dashboard JSON it's gonna say one already exists we could put two number two after it I was doing some other testing there so we're gonna pull in this dashboard and now we're gonna see and I'll just maximize this uh, and I've been run I've you know I was running this for us uh, last day or so we can see that now we've got VDL messages I'll extend this out a little longer I'll say the last 24 hours so we can see on the left we've got our HFDL and then on the right we have our VDL you can see the uh, messages that are coming in in their entirety down below which is pulled straight from the logs both on the HFDL and the VDL side and then finally under here uh, there's a toggle to open a, a map view right now I just have it split between VDL positions and HFDL positions so if you click on any of these I've got it sorted where you can open the log in an explorer and it should uh, take you to um, there's probably a better way to do this but you know the flight ID and you can see a little more info about that uh, I might have to sort that down a little bit more to come uh, to, to basically go with that particular spot uh, on the map because you know there could be many other entries in here um, let me do a, another example here but let's check this one so you can see the flight might have to work on this a little bit more but you know ideally what I wanted to try and do is sort it down uh, to that uh, actual uh, location uh, you know as well as uh, time but it looks like I may have shorted my uh, query just a little bit here we can see that uh, VDL we can click on one maybe open raw explorer and this was a little bit so that's what I was going after this one's uh, pulls from a little bit uh, different field AC location that was actually in there I know there's locations within the a cars message I've not figured out actually you know maybe a, a method of sorting that I'm sure someone else uh, of course uh, like the, the the bald geek has an excellent site and um, you know sorts out a lot of this information this was just another way of doing it and yeah so really it's honestly nothing more than getting your um, Dragon OS set up um, pull in a docker like I explained pull down this project and just follow the steps uh, you know of course have the appropriate software defined radios use the frequencies that are applicable to you know your area uh, or what you're wanting to look at and you should be up and running so there you go hopefully that uh, helps someone out and you know to me it's pretty enjoyable looking at uh, that data so all right thanks